a famous Kenyan blogger, or shall I say infamous, seems to have caused quite a star when he went online on the BBI platform for collecting signatures and used a fake name and a fake signature. Of course, the whole idea was to discredit or to show proof how the BBI process of collecting signatures online is faulty, has a problem. Incidentally, the same blogger in a post last month said that the BBI is unpopular. And of course, we are all allowed to have our own opinions. And those opinions could be factual or not factual. And I guess if somebody is so determined to prove that their personal opinion is fact, you could pull off a stunt yeah, like the one this particular blogger did. And chances are that you'll end up fooling a lot of people yeah, that actually your personal opinion is factual. But on our show today, I want to draw your attention to something <laughs> that you'll find very interesting. You see, in Kenya, we have a very active online community yeah, with very strong opinions. And of course, these opinions are not always factual. Now, that is very good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, I have a problem when somebody who calls themselves an analyst uses this online platform to make sweeping statements. And admittedly, it's a mistake that is easy to make. Because there are people who are paid to go online with multiple handles in order to push a certain agenda. To create the impression that a certain opinion is actually fact. Let me take you back to the 2017 presidential elections. I know many Kenyans in the diaspora who are using social media to gauge the popularity of presidential candidates. And they reached a point where they started getting very confused. At least those who had a very good understanding of Kenyan politics. And it got worse when the opinion polls kicked in. Because they seemed to support the popular view or the so-called popular view on social media. Well, looking back, we now know the truth. Indeed, we know a lot of things. We even know how much people are being paid yeah, to go online with multiple handles to push a particular presidential candidate. It was 20,000 shillings a week. <laughs> so, where did these keyboard warriors keyboard warriors paid for hire. Where did they go? They went nowhere. <laughs> They're still very much around. Yeah, they just found a new gig and another new gig after the 2017 presidential elections were over. And it would seem that the latest gig in town is bashing the BBI. Now, don't get me wrong. You are allowed to have an opinion. There are real people who have strong opinions against the BBI. I'm not talking about real people. I'm talking about paid keyboard warriors. And make no mistake about it. These people who finance, who pay these keyboard warriors, are not stupid. They're not wasting their money. They know very well that what they pay to be done is effective, very effective. Because what happens is that it sucks in real people. Many people who went online a few months ago 
with no opinion about the BBI now have a very strong opinion against it. Yeah? And it's not an accident. It's not their fault. Because they're human. Yeah? They've just been programmed. <laughs> they have just been programmed by some very clever keyboard warriors. Let me give you an example yeah, to prove my point. These keyboard warriors have been pushing the narrative that the BBI is about creating positions for some people. Positions which these people can never win in a free and fair election. And that has been repeated so many times that it has become factual. But hold on a minute and let us put some names <laughs> behind this fact in quotes. I'm sure these people are talking about Ray Lodinga. Now, let me ask you a very honest question and please give me an honest answer. Is it true that in a free and fair election, Ray Lodinga cannot win a political position? Is that factual? Is it true that he's so desperate to get a political position and there's no other way he can get it except through the back door, through the BBI, which will create so many positions that at least he'll get one of them? Is that factual? <laughs> what? Now, you don't have to like Ray Laudinga to face the facts. And I find it absolutely super fascinating that the person who first came up with this rhetoric, this narrative, was William Samuel Ruto, whom, if we are to believe this story, is so popular, can't you wait? that he has no problem winning elections. And because he has no problem winning elections, he does not need extra positions to be created for him to win elections. He is not desperate like Ray Lodinga. Yeah. Now, this is not a story I'm creating. I'm just going as per the narrative that has been stuffed down our throats by the keyboard warriors. So much so that many of us have started believing that it is true. Now, how popular is the deputy president? And I'm not talking about crowds being attracted to a meeting, distributing wheelbarrows. No, I am talking about a free and fair election. Now, His Excellency William Samuel Ruto, the deputy president, is deputy president courtesy of the 2017 elections. Now, did he win those elections in 2017? Facts only, please. Did he win those elections? Well, the Supreme Court did not believe he won those elections. Fact. Because the Supreme Court nullified his victory in those elections. Yeah? And every Kenyan even babies know that those initial 2017 presidential elections were pap, 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 duly elected. So, a man who has not been tested ever in a national presidential election is so popular, more popular than the other guy who is desperate yeah, because he doesn't win elections. He's so desperate that he wants to create extra positions so that he can grab one. <laughs> you see how effective these keyboard warriors are? You see how effective it is when a message is repeated to you over and over and over again? And it gets more dangerous. This misinformation gets much more dangerous. Because we have lazy journalists. You know, in my days, we used to have real journalists. Most of them were not very well educated. <laughs> Many of them could not even write an article 
in correct English, not even one sentence in correct English. But they would easily go to the Madara slums or the Kibra slums where the vast majority of voters live. But today's journalists <laughs> go to Kibra? Are you serious? I'll get mugged. My smartphone will vanish. I can only go there when there's a function. Yeah, and my security is assured. That's today's journalist for you. So what do they do? They pick up the information. They pick up their leads from social media. They gauge the mood of the public from social media. Yeah, where the keyboard warriors are in control. Pick up any major newspaper in Kenya today and you'll not read more than three sentences before you come to something that is completely unqualified. There's no proof. There's no backing of what is being said. It was all picked up from social media because journalists are also human and they're also on social media and they also drink in what the keyboard warriors are busy dishing out for free. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of legwork. Just go to social media and gauge the mood of the Kenyan public. Really? <laughs> and you can very quickly tell, even from comments here on this channel, you can very quickly tell that there are very few people who get their views elsewhere, yeah, apart from social media. Controlled and dominated by keyboard warriors who tell us the BBI is very unpopular. And the main reason why it's unpopular because some people are trying to get positions, the presidency, the premiership, through the back door by pushing the BBI so that they get a position because they can never ever win that position in a free fair verifiable election in Kenya so is the BBI popular is it true that it is so unpopular that those behind it are so desperate for signatures that you can go online and sign multiple times and it will be counted? Well, after all that I've said, I have no option but to stick only to the facts and the facts alone. And what are those facts? Number one, is the BBI popular? My answer, I have my own opinion. Yeah, which by the way is a very informed opinion because I'm very close to the ground. But I don't have any facts to back up my opinion. I don't have them yet. But we are about to find out whether the BBI is popular or not. But I'll tell you a fact I know which will definitely impact on whether the BBI is going to be popular or not. And that fact is that one of the BBI principles, Ray Laudinga, is very, very popular countrywide. And even if you hate him with all your heart, that is a fact. Proven in 2007, proven in 2013, and proven in 2017, even by the highest court in the land. And this man is promoting and pushing the BBI. Jijazie. <laughs> I think the best way to illustrate this is from a comment. Now, very recently, I talked to this Kenyan. Yeah, he doesn't come from Nyanza, by the way. Yeah, and I asked him a simple question. Well, to support BBI? His answer was long. So I will paraphrase. Uyu baba, sa zengine ufanya vitu zinafanya mina kasirika sana. Lakini, sa hili anakuja kuitisha kura. Na angalianga uyo mze, 
Alafu nakumbuka zile vitu amefanya kupigania mwananchi wa kawaida. Na nguvu zinaisha kwa mwili. Nafanya vile anataka. Kama ni kura napatia yeye. Nakwambia hii bibi yae, wacha nikwambie ukweli. Hii kitu itapita asubuhi mapema sana. Pengine kama Raila asapoti kitu, hiyo ni mambo mengine. Lakini huyu mtu akiingia kiwanjani, he. Hata itaji uhuru. Huyu baba akiingia kiwanjani, hakuna wimbo wengine watu watakao kimba. Nakwambia tu kweli. The long and short of what he said is that the popularity of Raila Odinga will carry the BBI through without any hindrance. It is really very simple. As you and I are impacted by keyboard warriors, pushing through a rhetoric yeah, and an agenda by a man who last won only an MP seat and a man who has never vied or won a presidential election. As we are drinking in all this, propaganda, vitu kwa ground, ni tafauti sana. You see, the vast majority of Kenyan voters are not on social media. Hawana bundles. And although they really like free things, like free wheelbarrows, free motorbikes, etc., etc., they are not as stupid as many of us would like to believe. Something else. They are also registered voters. And let me illustrate that further. Go to a one-roomed slum house somewhere in Kibra and you'll find five registered voters in one house. Visit two houses in Kilimani or Kilelesha or Lovington and you'll find not a single person has ever voted in Kenya. Most of the ones who are registered as voters are politically active. Yeah, they're involved in some campaigns of a certain candidate somewhere. Yeah. But the vast majority, <laughs> very busy on social media, have never in their lives voted. So, make your decision. Is the BBI popular or not? Will the BBI pass or will it not? Jijazie, make a decision for yourself. Because now you have the cold facts. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.